Hello, today I would like to go over some activities that I created when I'm working with my students who are alternately assessed and we are addressing the ELA Essential Element RL 410, which is demonstrating understanding of text while actively engaging in shared reading of stories. And so I'm going to share with you right here a story that I found on PBS Learning Media um, which is a really awesome folktale. It's a Chinese folktale called Little Rabbits. And you'll see here, you can share this to your Google Classroom. You can download the video and embed it into um, you know, any platform that you're using, whether that is a PowerPoint, Pear Deck, Nearpod, whatever it is that you use in your classroom with your students. And it also has a transcript. And the transcript has both English and Chinese text. And so what you can do, um, things that I've done is I've adapted texts by typing them out in BoardMaker. So you have all the um, words within the video that you can watch and then you can pull out if you want to actually create an adapted text or a Microsoft Sway for your students. So micro, uh, PBS Learning Media has some really great resources. Um, again, it has the video in Chinese and in English. And it's really cool that it has both of those features. The videos are not very long. It's only about five minutes. Um, and then it tells you over here what the story is compared to in Western stories. So we'll get to that in a minute for an extension activity. However, I'm going to go through and show you how I created a really fun and engaging game that I played with my students and it really got them to understand various story elements and had them really engaged in the lesson. And I was also able to embed some formative assessment by embedding questions that I wanted to make sure my students knew about the story. So when you're looking for different engaging activities, especially virtual activities, it's kind of tricky. So I found this um, really cool, it was actually an icebreaker game. I'm sure some of you have seen it or heard of it. And it was called the M&M Games. So what you do is you have a bag of M&Ms, you just randomly pick out a color, and then the color corresponds to various questions. So some of the questions that I aligned here were questions that I pulled out of my lesson, right? So some of my objectives, some of my essential questions, whatever it is you want your students to be able to grasp is what you're going to embed here in your little um, graphic, right? So I picked, I want them to share a character from our story, the setting we saw or read about, a feeling the character felt, what was the problem, how is it solved, and then their favorite part, right? We're talking about actively engaging them, so I want to know what they like the best, right? And you never know what they're going to say, and that's part of the fun of it, right? So I went through and I added in all the questions that I would want my students to be able to talk about or recall from the story. So this is definitely an activity that you would use towards the end of a story, maybe after you've watched the video a few times, so that your students are able to recall some of that information. Right here I have the words because I would go through this with my students and I would be supporting them by either myself having the bag of M&Ms and randomly shaking them up and pulling one out or I could speak with my parents and see if they were willing to have them each have their own bag as well. So it's totally up to you if you know that you know your parents um, may not be able to do that and that's perfectly fine. You can just have your bag ready to go, shake them up and be able to pull them out, right? And you can go through your class and you can either be the one to support maybe the first time around you model what this game would look like. So you would go through, you'd shake up your bag, you pull out a green M&M, you call on a student and say, hmm, okay, I want you to share with me what was the problem in our story, right? Then maybe you have your student pick on another student whose turn it is and like, okay, it's Lucy's turn. Great. Lucy, shake up the bag. I have your question right here. I pull out an orange M&M and Lucy, you're going to tell me what is a setting we saw, right? Or we read about in the, in our story. So you can go through and you can call on the students to show them one time how they can go around taking turns, right? You can have your students pick on the next student to go, right? To get that participation and that engagement with each other. And then what you can do is you can break up into small groups. So then within small groups, have the students turn and ask each other. So then they're the leaders of the activity, right? We went through it once, right? We modeled, 
we showed our students exactly how they're going to first pick a color, pick a buddy, turn, orient, look at on the screen, right? Who they're talking to, address them by getting their name to get their attention, and then asking the question that goes along with the character or sorry, that goes along with the story element. And then you would have them turn in those small groups and do that. And now I used M&Ms here, right? Because that's really fun for my students. They are very motivated by candy. However, if you don't wanna use that and that's something either that your students are not engaged by or you're just not interested in using anything like that, no candy, that's fine. You can make these colors crayons right? You can make them shapes of markers. You can just make them circles. They do not have to be M&Ms, right? They're just color coded. The point is you want to align a color to a question and give your students a fun way to engage in an activity where they're talking to each other. They're actively engaging. They're talking about the story in a fun way that's game-based. So Again, doesn't have to be M&Ms by any means, but if they like that, cool, you can make it anything. You, make, you can make it vegetables, right? Whatever works for your students, whatever works for you that you guys will feel comfortable with. And it doesn't even have to be something that you have. You can just have pictures of them that you pull up to share or cut out a circle, color it in red, and there you go, right? So definitely do not need the actual item. It's the point of the game, right? That's what's the most fun. And that actually helps us to understand towards the end of our lesson, did our students get that objective? Were they able to recall the information from the story, right? So tying it back into that assessment, right? So even though it's a fun game, we're still assessing. We have a summative assessment kind of to tell us whether or not they're able to take out that content. Are they able to pull out the information from the text to tell us something about it in a fun and engaging way? Okay, so that's one really cool game that I thought of that could be really fun for your virtual classroom. And then, because like we had said, the Little Rabbits is a version of Little Red Riding Hood or the Three Little Pigs, I wanted to show you a graphic organizer that you then can use to compare and contrast a story that they probably have heard in school as they've been coming through the years. Um, Three Little Pigs might be familiar and maybe it's not and that's okay too because you can also just very simply pull up a YouTube video um, that has another video of the Three Little Pigs or if you prefer Little Red Riding Hood, right? And you can go through as you're moving along in your lesson as an extension activity, you know, let's talk about some of the similarities and differences between the Three Little Pigs and the Little Rabbits. Now again, you can embed this into your Jamboard. You can also have your students draw this out. You can have icons um, printed that you might want your students to drag and drop in the different areas, especially if those icons have a border or are color coded, right? That could support your learners if they're using AAC devices, right? So many different ways to find some cool and engaging and collaborative fun activities that go beyond just answering questions and reading a story. So I hope this gave you some ideas on how you can embed some fun games also used for assessment in our lessons and I hope this is helpful.